Hickok 45, been experimenting with some new loads for my 1911. I think they'll take out a jug. Wow. Try that other one over there. Oh, that's some powerful stuff. Let's try that red plate. Woo! Knocked him crazy. What about a two liter? Oh, that's got some, some jump to it. Let's try that target. See if it'll blow it up. <laughs> wow. Oh, no wonder. 357 Magnum. Oh, 357 Sig, huh? No, I don't think it's a 357 Sig. Let's see. I've got another magazine full of ammo. Oh, no, it's not a Sig. It's a 357 Magnum, just like this. A regular rimmed cartridge like we shoot in our revolvers. I'll be darned. You already knew that, didn't you, from the title. So uh, let's just empty this magazine at something. So we're shooting a regular old 357 Magnum in a 1911. Pretty amazing to me. I was just going over there and wake up the gong. I ought to reach it, but it's a 357. Yeah. <laughs> Got there pretty fast too, didn't it? Let's try the red plate. I can't believe I hit it. I jerked the trigger. I don't deserve that hit. I take it back. It was a terrible let off. That one felt better. Probably missed. Oh, there we go. I'll take that. I think. It's hard to hear the hit. It's so loud. So loud. Let's try a pig. Doesn't matter how much they ring, because they will fall. Yeah, this is the Kunan and uh, 357 Magnum. I've had quite a few requests for this over the years. Finally got one, thanks to Bud's Gun Shop. Uh, checked on the website and uh, had one coming from Kunan, I thought, but uh, it, you know, they're apparently having a hard time making enough of them. And so, notice Bud's had a couple. So we appreciate that, getting that from Bud's, uh, our major sponsor. I, I've wanted to shoot one for quite a while, and well, particularly, I'll be honest, since people have started requesting them so much, I, it's re, I guess, renewed my interest in them. I remember when they were around back in the, wow, the late 70s, I think early 80s, then they changed hands, uh, they went out of business a time or two, I think, and, uh, and then they've kind of come back to life, you know, ownership changes and all those sorts of things. Uh, in a, around 2006 or something like that. So they've been around, maybe it was even later than that, 2009, I don't know. But in, in, in the last six or seven years, they've come back again. But they've been around off and on for a good while. And I used to hear some thing negative uh, and mixed reviews about them. And, you know, whether warranted or not about the early models. But recently I've heard better things. And I've heard of people actually carrying them and it being their their 1911, uh, I don't know a guy in a gun shop not too long ago, about a year ago, was talking about, when are you going to do a Kunan? That's my carry gun. I said, really? Really? You carry Kunan? And he showed it to me. And said, yeah, I love it, man. This is this is the gun. His favorite gun. So, okay. I guess they're working for you and everything. So it's been on our radar here for a, a little while. So we're glad to be able to bring it to you. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm impressed. It's a big old gun. That's one reason we have the other one out here. Have the Ed Brown uh, standard size 1911, and I don't know if you can really tell, but it it's a little bigger. You know, you get your full length dust cover. Let me hold them up together. Maybe you get a better idea here. Kind of, you know, uh, the the regular 1911 full size is a little smaller, and you get your full length dust cover on the Kunan, and because of that long cartridge, you know, the grip is just bigger. It has to be. See, it's it's just bigger than the. 1940 this is a 45 and 45 grip it's just a little bit bigger it's a little bit like a 1911 uh, full-size on steroids uh, 
and the magazines i had the mag pouch out here to they just have one extra mag you know too but it wouldn't fit in the mag pouches you know so you know it's just a big old long pouch you know because a 357 is pretty long pretty long cartridge and that's why we're shooting federal 357 magnum here it will fire 38 special if you change out the springs it comes with a lighter spring and then this will be going back to bud so you can watch for it but we we switched it out and shot some 38 these are plus p's but I guess there's a range of power factors, uh, variances, you know, among plus P's. And I like this, uh, this plus P ammo. We shoot a fair amount of that, uh, 38 Special from Federal, and where the box went. But it's, uh, and it works pretty well. We would have a, a malfunction occasionally. The spring is still a little too tight for it, but it's okay. You wouldn't want to carry it for self-defense. But just for our plinking, it was fine. But we'd have an occasional malfunction, a hang-up because the, it's just not quite hot enough. If you've got some warm, really warm, plus P38 special, you know, they would work fine. And with the current spring in it, it doesn't even cycle with slide at all. Of course, I mean, 357 is a hot round. So uh, that's kind of where that goes. And anyway, it's got a great trigger. I, I'm impressed with it. I, you know, I'm going to be sorry to let it go back. I have to say, it's not, it wouldn't be my carry gun or anything, but it, it would be a cool gun to have. Uh, I have to say, John and I have been having some fun with it. We changed out the springs, like I said, fought, uh, shot some hand loads in it, which did okay. The 38 Special does okay, occasional hang up. I think as it gets broken in, the 38 Special would be fine. Now with the, the full power 357 Magnum, we've not had a hang up yet, all right? And I've been shooting it for almost a week now off and on. and maybe fired around 100 rounds, you know, something like that, and it's it's not had a, a bobble. It might today, you know how that goes. That's why we're live here in living color. Uh, but it has functioned just fine. It's, uh, you know, it, it's just kind of a 1911, just a little bit bigger. It has nice sights on it. They're not, these aren't night sights, but they're nice. You know, kind of a Novak style, adjustable and everything. Um, the grips, uh, I don't think they're all that good looking, but they're okay. It says they're walnut, but they need to need to cut some good black walnut, don't they? <laughs> Get some better looking walnut. And that's partly because I think I think darker grips look good on a stainless gun. Well, I like this one. Hey, how's that for an example right here close by? You know, don't you think uh, a darker grip or even a stag looks good on a stainless gun? Uh, better than kind of a, I don't know, bland grip, but eh, that's minor complaint right gun the most important thing is if it works and has a good trigger nice trigger uh really a target trigger I, I could live with that trigger on any pistol i own pretty nice pretty nice and it tames the 357 357 has got some blast if you fired these same rounds and you've seen me do it in a revolver got some serious blast and a fair amount of muzzle rise but this tames it pretty well, I have to say. You know, you're, you're shooting a real gun. Let's put a couple more on that paper and then we'll move out somewhere else. Boy, get my ears in tight. <laughs> All right, let's pop a couple quickly here. Yeah, pretty controllable. Let's pop a pot. Mocha pot. Uh, I see him on the ground there. I think I can finish him off, maybe. Yeah, we'll get him. Have one more magazine. It's pretty interesting. Standard old 357 Magnum cartridges. Been around since, uh, uh oh, when? Oh, 1935, right? Yeah, I remember when they were invented. 35. All right, let's try a two liter. Sights seem to be right on. Can't blame it on the sights when I miss. No, I can't. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Go back over there and do a little hog hunting. Might make a good hog gun. Anyway. I got a terrible footing here. I got my feet right. Act like I can, I can shoot no matter how I'm standing. I don't know where I'm going. This 
blow. <laughs> Not sure. Let's load up again. Pretty neat. I'll be able to tell better when I take a shot at that though. That ram. Uh, so if you like 1911s, and uh, who would this firearm appeal to? People who like 1911s, style firearms, and people who like the 357 Magnum cartridge, I guess. And, uh, and again, you've got a rimmed cartridge. Uh, I don't have one on me, I guess, but you know, that's the difference. I'll bet I could find one. Here's one. Uh, with semi-automatic semi cartridges, you know, you don't have a rim, you know, like, like you do with a revolver cartridge generally. And, you know, it, it's a challenge. That's why you don't see many uh, semi-automatic handguns that fire these kinds of rounds. They just weren't designed for that. You got your Desert Eagle, the Kunan. Desert Eagles come in 357, 44 mag, and other cartridges. Uh, and I'm trying to, there's probably some others I just can't think of it right away, but there just aren't many of them manufactured to fire these revolver cartridges. And uh, so it's, it's quite an accomplishment to be able to do that and make one that's reliable. You know, you can do anything that'll work part of the time. Oops, I'll try to that one. But uh, to make it reliable, and so far, like I said, with the Magnums, and the magnum spring in there we've had no issues so pretty cool and have been uh, doing some good shooting with i'll have to say better than doing right now uh, i the first couple of shots i took were just right on the red plate when i the first very first shots i took with the firearm so the sights are right on so any missing that you might encounter here today is all on me it's it's a big old semi-heavy gun, but you want that, you know, for this cartridge, really. Let me try it at red plate again. There we go. Let me try those rams. be hitting it low or not hitting it at all I see I, I need to be holding up a little bit more that's what it is yeah it's almost always a windage or an elevation problem <laughs> popping oh more ammo I like hunting goats that's kind of fun especially with a magnum <laughs> Turkey by mistake. Uh, pretty neat. Pretty neat. And what's this guy doing still alive? <laughs> oh boy. Propane. Well, can y'all feel the concussion? That is that is a hot round. Okay, I'll let you go here, but I've got to shoot a couple more. Uh, what have I not? lied about regarding this firearm you can see you got your kind of your the style there the external extractor uh good sights adjustable and you know everything you in the 1911 basically it's just set up for a hotter cartridge than the more pressure you know than the 45 acp and a bigger bigger format and i guess i won't take it apart i i could i don't know if you want to see it apart it's a uh, it, it, it seems to be well made. Uh, we've been impressed with it. I'm not trying to sell these things. I don't care whether you have one or not, but but I just want to pass along. You know what my impressions are. It it seems to be uh, well made. Just uh, you know the parts fit and it seems uh, a lot of precision. And I don't know if you can tell that on camera as much as you know somebody actually fooling with it and taking it apart. And all the fittings seem tight, tight enough. And uh, comes, you notice you got your kind of your high power style link there. You don't have this typical 1911 link, but uh, if you can tell anything from that, it just seems 
like a well-made gun you know, the slide and the internals uh, and they're not cheap they're uh, they run I what twelve hundred thirteen hundred dollars if you can get one I don't think they're producing that many of them so just a pretty neat gun I, again it's just one of those like I need another gun but I really would not mind having one it's a gun I wouldn't mind owning John I feel pretty much the same way not that we're going to start carrying something this big and heavy but it's pretty cool pretty cool as as we have lectured to you all before every firearm does not have to have some ultimate purpose like if it's not your carry gun or it's not a firearm you're going to hunt with why do you have it how about because it's cool how about because it's fun <laughs> and maybe you will use it someday maybe for hog hunting who knows but uh it's, it's neat probably 95 percent of the firearms out there are, are, are not needed right therefore okay now let's see there we go boy it fits you get her lined up everything trouble okay get the bushing back in here Oh, I guess we'll put this back on. Yeah. Is it, if you know and are familiar with 1911s, you, know, you, you can't hate it because it's, uh, even though it's just a little different, some of the parts are interchangeable and some are not. But, uh, you know, it's that's neither here nor there, really. It's uh, just pretty cool. I, again, my the thing that impresses me the most is that it has, it, it's pretty sleek and it seems well made. And, unlike the desert eagle you know i mean let's face it, the desert eagle is is a brick more or less you know you might think it's a cool gun i've got one and 44 magnum an old one uh but i i much prefer a firearm like this if i were choosing for example between a desert eagle and 357 magnum and this firearm there'd be no competition yeah unless this one proved unreliable on me or something uh and it hasn't because it just feels so much like my 1911 it's just a little bit bigger all right so we're gonna shut up shoot a little bit more let you go home uh, I know you've come a long way here to get to compound Tennessee some of you had to fly in some of you drove and it's just a long trip so we want to let you get uh, started on your trip home all right I'm like a big old 357 magnum cartridge such a versatile cartridge more versatile though of course in a revolver because it doesn't matter what load you're <laughs> you're you're shooting it's going to function okay uh, and that's the the thing about any semi-automatic of course is it you know it relies on springs and spring tension and all that you know working properly but as long as you've got it all you know set up the right way like the spring that's in there and then uh you know warm 357 magnum ammo and, and you'd have to experiment i haven't shot any 125 grain ammo or anything this is 158 but uh, you just have to experiment and make sure your ammo is not too light, you know, if you're going into a life or death situation or hog hunting or something. And I have tried some other, I uh, had some, oh gosh, someone gave me some Black Hills 357 Magnum. I shot some of that, it worked. I shot some, um, uh, oh gosh, I think I got some. Oh yeah, PMC. Oh yeah, one, one thing I thought was kind of interesting, with P, these magazines hold seven rounds. And I was at her shooting uh, mostly federal, but I was kind of shooting up some other old junk ammo, some different things I had. And uh, the PMC works too, but the magazines would just hold six rounds. I thought I was imagining that at first, but it was just over and over, six rounds, both mags, PMC. And, and I looked at the rims. The rims seem a little bit larger on, on uh, the PMC. That's got to be it. I mean, duh, what else could it be? Yeah. So that was interesting. Incredibly interesting to me whether it is to you or not okay all right let's uh let's clean up anything that needs cleaning up here pretty neat old gun uh, <laughs> if you're a 357 fan oh i forgot i've got a couple of cinder blocks we should be able to take those pieces out with maybe two shots we're lucky one two is what i thought i really don't want to shoot too much of the steel that's close but I'll give you an idea. Let's shoot something on the tree there. Let's see if it knocks it around. <laughs> yeah. Let's do that again. 
pops it around. Uh, cowboy is pretty much hard and steel. We'll put one on him. Dead center. Oh no, I missed a two liter. How'd I do that? Yeah. How could that happen? Oh man. Let's make sure the gong's awake. I believe he is. We've got a, one turkey has to fall at least. Boom! <laughs> oh, let's knock that one off the stand over there. He falls a little further. Doop. Spun around a little bit. <laughs> nice. Wow. You can see from the way those are swinging, because they're not light that uh, there's a little bit of power involved here and that's what you get with a 357 magnum you don't have to go to 44 magnum to get some power and uh, the gun tames it well so like i say i, I i'm pretty fond of it I, I have to say probably not enough to buy one uh but but it's cool it wouldn't be a bad you know, choice to have around for for enjoyment you know i have if I counted how many 357 Magnums I have, I, I know it goes into double digits. It may go into, it may be 15 or 20, I don't know, but I have a lot of, in both rifle, you know, and handguns. And it's just one of my favorite cartridges, always has been. It was my first uh, double action revolver I ever owned, model 19, you know, and I used to shoot the heck out of that gun back in 74, 73. And I just uh, have always liked that cartridge. I know a lot of you do too. So, if you like 1911s and you like the 357, and you got a hand that's large enough to that this feels okay in, you might really like this. I'll, I'll have to say, seems to work. And that is one fairly important factor, isn't it? So, I hope you enjoyed seeing that thing in action. And for you folks that have been requesting it for years, here it is, the Kunan 357 Magnum. And I think that's the way you pronounce it, Kunan. I always want to say Kunan the Barbarian or something, Conan, but it's, I think it is Kunan. Uh, but by any name, it's pretty cool. Life is good. Hi, I'm Zeke with the Sonoran Desert Institute. And here at SDI, we're extremely proud to be sponsors of the Hickok 45 channel. You may be asking yourself, what is SDI? SDI is an affordable, fully accredited distance learning education program. We have an emphasis in gunsmithing and firearms technology. If you decide to become a gunsmith, you'll need to learn proper gunsmithing techniques. And while some people will use an apprenticeship program to gain these techniques, a formal education will ensure an organized, more comprehensive learning environment. But when you choose a gunsmithing school, it's still kind of difficult. So it's very important that you choose a gunsmithing school that meet the following criteria. First, look for a nationally or regionally accredited program. And whether distance learning online or through a brick and mortar ground program, a gunsmithing program should always have a hands-on element. And finally, make sure you look for a school with high student satisfaction. Find reviews online, check out its Facebook or other social media, or get on the same social media sites, find some alumni, and ask to speak with them about their experience. And while we're not at SDI today, I do have some of the firearms I've learned to work on and built myself through the SDI program. So let's go take a look at them. Okay, maybe not, we'll just get seriously. Can I not get a chair that fits me? I'm a big guy, dude. So I guess back to what we were originally talking about. Above all else, find the school that's right for you. It's not always gonna be the distance education programs or the brick and mortar ground schools that are for everybody. Just make sure you do your research on multiple options before you make that decision. But if you want more information on our gunsmithing school, just go to www.sdi.edu or call us at 1-800-336-8939.